Hi, everyone. Welcome to Save the Date, your dating survival guide from Coffee Meets Bagel. I'm Down, your host and CNBC's chief dating officer. Each episode, I invite a dating expert to explore what it takes to go on great dates and ultimately find a great relationship. Today, I'm joined by Raina Greenberg and Ashley Hesseltine, hosts of the hit podcast, Girls Gotta Eat. As comedian and podcasters, Raina and Ashley are experts at going beyond the surface and making deep connections with people. So I thought it would be really fun for us to learn from Raina and Ashley. How do we get beyond small talk? Hi, how are you? How was the weekend? What do you do for, you know, what are you, what's your next vacation? All this small talk conversation is something that we want to avoid, but sometimes it's really hard to go beyond that, especially when we are actually meeting somebody for the first time. So let's learn from Raina and Ashley about how we can make conversation with our dates really fun and juicy. Welcome to the show. Thanks Hi. for having us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm really excited. Um, so first of all, Raina and Ashley, were you guys always good with conversations or is this a skill that you had to learn and hone over time? Yes, always good. <laughs> no, no, End just, of the podcast. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, d- and dating's a, a different, you know, world, but I've always been like a talker, you know, to get in trouble in school, like talking too much, can talk to anybody. When I was a kid, I could talk to adults, you know, I just, I'm a verbal person. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, I, you know, I, we've all had those awkward moments. Uh, where you're like, oh God, what am I going to say next? But I think probably one of my skills is is conversation. That's why we started this podcast. I'm sure Raina feels the same way. <laughs> yeah, um, I've always been way chatty. I was always in trouble in school. Um, <laughs> yeah. Ashley, Ashley and I are very social. We have lots of friends. Uh, I started waiting tables when I was 14. So mm-hmm. at a very young age, I had to learn how to like walk up to strangers and immediately start conversation. And mm. I did that through the age of like maybe 26 working in restaurants. I worked in sales after that. Um, so lots of that, but, uh, as Ashley said, a date is a romantic interest, totally different than walking up to any other stranger cold or being in a social situation. Absolutely. So we know it breeds a little bit of anxiety. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about that. So I'm sure you've been on many, many, many dates. And so, and it is very different types of settings. So in those moments, are you, were were you guys always good with, you know, conversation with dates, especially, you know, if you go on dating through a dating app and you haven't really met this person um, before. How are your experiences? Um, yeah, I mean, it's weird. Cause I mean, I feel like Rain and I have probably like lived two different worlds. Like you, we used to date when we would meet people in the wild and then dating apps came along and I've used them a little bit more than Raina, but like it changed the game where you were like, I have no, I never met this person in my mm-hmm. life. So mm-hmm. uh, it can be super awkward. I mean, we just, now it's, it's, I feel like it's easier than ever because we've all had this collective pandemic experience. Mm-hmm. So I think just to speak on where we are right now, uh, you know, June, 2021, like I always ask, how's your pandemic been, you know, like <laughs> how's, how was before when I kind of got back and I was dating in the fall, I just was so curious of like, how did you spend those three months? You know, did you yeah. quarantine? Were you here in New York? You know, I personally went to my parents' farm. Raina stayed here the whole time. I, I think everybody has this like fascinating, even if, even if it isn't a fascinating story, it still is because we all had a totally different pandemic experience. Uh, you know, some people it's not, I'm not saying it like it's so light and happy, but I think we just all shared something and I, you know, now we're just like, what vaccine did you get? You know, <laughs> you find out real quick, like who people, you know, think won the election, you know, whether or not mm-hmm. they like believe, <laughs> I think kind of, we've just lived a collective experience and it's a really good conversation starter. Uh, I guess it could go South if you, you know, but have a lot of different, uh, different yeah. belief system, but I, that's where I like to start. And I think it kind of lends itself to other types of side conversations. What did you binge on Netflix? Do I have a list in my phone? If right. I'm stuck for on a, with, on a conversation, I have a list in my phone of everything I watched in 2020 and I'm happy <laughs> to pull it out and start going through it. <laughs> that's, that's really funny. And you know, if, if there are, if the conversations go south because of difference in opinion, whatever, uh, maybe painful at that time and a little bit uncomfortable, but it's better to have that conversation up front, right? Than way, way down the road. So I think that's still good. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and you're right, like having a common experience that we all went through, like commonality definitely is something that we could, uh, I, I, leverage is not the right word, but you know, we could like lean into um, right. to have an interesting conversation. So that's a really great point. What about you, Reina? 
I try not to put too much pressure on it. Like Ashley, I just like to, I think a, what have you been up to is just like a great way to start a conversation mm. on a date with somebody that you're already in like a romantic setting with basically. Yeah. Um, I think that that can always lead to something. I also try not to beat myself up if it doesn't turn into something really deep and meaningful. Cause maybe that's just not my person. Maybe they don't vibe with me. You know, yeah. the last two serious relationships I've been in on first date out of the gate, we talked about whether we wanted kids. That's probably mm. somebody that like, I want to date somebody that like kind of gets into it a little more. If it stays a little service level, that just might not be my person. Right. Um, but I think really service level stuff is great to start with because you find common interests and commonalities, and then you can dive a little deeper, you know? So, you know, where have you traveled? Where did you go to school? What are your interests and hobbies? Ashley and I are into comedy. What comedians do you like? Uh, <laughs> we're trying to travel this summer. If the, I mean, the perfect question is like, if the world opened up tomorrow, where would you go mm -hmm. immediately? Right. Um, so anything that you can talk about topical conversations, I think can get a little deeper. Uh, not everything has to be the most deep conversation, but I find that uh, anybody that I'm going to connect with, it will get deep quickly. And anybody mm. that I'm not, no hard feelings. We can be friends. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. You we don't have to be like, oh my God, my dating life sucks because not every single conversation or every single person that we meet ends up in some kind of deep, deep, deep conversation. So that's a good point. Uh-huh. Oh, no, I, I, um, and I think you can like prep. It sounds so dorky, but my, <laughs> uh, my best friend and I, when we were both single, we were, you know, younger in our twenties living in Atlanta, we were, we were having these experiences where like we would be on a date and some guy would ask us what our hobbies were. And we would black out and we were like, what do we, <laughs> what do we do? What do we like to do? And who so am I? Kind of, yeah. Like who am I? What, what, what kind of music do you like? I don't know. Like I forget. you get like put on the spot or something. Yeah. So we literally like sat down and like, ask each other what our hobbies were. Like we almost had like a fake date between each other. And I was like, okay, Ashley, you love, you know, <laughs> hip hop and R&B from the late nineties, early two thousands. You love yoga. You do these things, you know, you do stand up comedy. I kind of had to be like, I, I think it's have your, have those quet answers yeah. to the basic questions locked and loaded and have some questions too. Raina recently, what was your, um, you saw a good meme of, uh, about the fantasy world or what was it of like a question to oh, ask? Oh yeah. We were just at my, the guy that I'm dating was asking me questions of just, we, we like to like fire random questions at each other. And he said, if you could pick one like fictional fantasy world to live in, what would it be? So like Harry Potter or Lord of the Rings, stuff like that. And I think it's real. And like, like what character would you be? Mm -hmm. He said that he would be a bar back on the Simpsons. And I was like, you, you work at a bar in your wildest <laughs> fan in your wildest <laughs> fantasies. Yeah. You're a cartoon bar back. Um, <laughs> But it, le it like led to this cool conversation about how he like went to a reading for the Simpsons and met the creator of the Simpsons mm. and then like what he's interested in and any of these like fun questions. Ashley and I always say like, it doesn't have to be the most like kooky question. Like if you were like in outer space, like what kind of like <laughs> astronaut would you be? No, but, like we don't like kooky. <laughs> Uh, but any, we, we have a great episode that we did um, with Kendall um, from The Bachelorette. Uh, what was it? February. Kendall Long. We, yeah. yeah, Kendall Long, where we ran through first date questions with our listeners mm. and it was really fun. But um, again, I think really just service level stuff can lead to really fun getting to know each other. And also, I don't necessarily, Ash and I have talked about this. I don't have to walk away from every date feeling like, you know, I went through the interview questions and learned everything about like, where did you go to college? Do you have siblings, et cetera. Sometimes just learn learning like, are you funny? Are you creative? Are you uh, a, an explorer of the world? I like to walk away knowing that too. Mm. So any of that is fine. Yeah. Mm. Um, I'm really glad that you brought that up, Ashley, because, um, you know, I think some of us do feel kind of dorky. But you practice everything else, right? Like, it's, especially if you've been, if we're like, haven't dated in a while, you're rusty. It's like, why do you think that you don't want it to work at something? Right. It's not natural. It doesn't, we don't come out of the womb. Like I'm ready to fucking date. I'm going to crush <laughs> it. Like you have to practice it. Like you practice anything else. It's like a muscle. So yeah. I think that stuff, it sounds dorky, but, um, I'm, I'm going to, uh, normalize it and admit it here today that I, <laughs> that I recite my hobbies back to myself in the mirror. Love it. Just kidding. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I practiced, you know, like uh, maybe like different types of not, maybe not practice, but like definitely have put some time thinking about, oh, what kind of questions do I want to ask, ask this person? And, you know, good thing mm -hmm. about dating app is that you, you know, a little bit about that person. Already, yeah. Right. And so definitely have taken the time to do that. And then, you know, remember feeling like, oh, 
oh, this conversation has to be natural flowing. And it has to be natural flowing. So I shouldn't be, I shouldn't be prepping and feel, feeling a little dorky, but I, I think this is a good point and that everybody should, um, you know, we always get better with practice, like you said. So mm -hmm. I want to ask you about some really, really bad dating experience for you guys. Like, I'm sure you've, <laughs> uh, even though you're a great conversation list, I don't know, like just nothing stuck and you're throwing things on the wall, like trying to get it, get it going, but it's just like, you know, pin drop and it's super quiet. Like, can you guys, can you tell us about that experience and how you guys kind of managed? I always say like, if we stay on a, a terrible date, we have like a great story. Um, mm -hmm. I think in New York city, especially uh, any major city, let's say any city, anybody that you give two hours of your time to, um, Ashley says this a lot, you know, you, you should be able to find out something about a person that's interesting, fun, cool. Maybe you make a friend. Um, but at the end of the day, it is just two hours of your life. Don't be so hard on yourself. It's, it's just a couple hours. You'll go home. You'll forget about it. As long as you feel safe and somebody isn't being terrible to you. Yeah. Um, I've had dates for just like nothing. One of the first episodes we ever did was called how to, how to lose a girl in one date. And it was okay. about this terrible date. I went on this guy was super rude to me. He didn't care about anything I had to say. He made me go to an ATM in the pouring rain to get cash for myself. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, and I just, I, I tried to not like go home and be like, dating is terrible. Men are terrible. I'm never going to find anybody. It was just a couple hours. It's a funny story. It's, it's totally fine. Just get through it. Go home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we, we, oh yeah, we always say you can learn something from somebody with my best guy friend. He he's married now, but he just would he was, he dated so hard in New York city. And his thing was just like, no bad dates. Like, you know, he was like, I went out with this woman. She, it was a catfish situation. She showed up looking totally different than her photos, but she was an attorney and I got some free legal advice, you know, like, it's just like, take something <laughs> that you can take from the date. Uh, I, yeah, I, I went on a date, um, in the fall, oh, this was right around the election. And I had been really chatting with this guy on the apps. And then we had moved to text and he had this incredible banter, like to the point where mm. it was so witty. And so we had so much chemistry on text that I was like posting these conversations on my Instagram story, mm. uh, like to give people some relief from election coverage. Cause I was like, this is just too good. And it was kind of relevant. And then we met up in person and, um, the first thing was his voice was unreal. It was like <laughs> the only thing I can compare it to is Michael Jackson. We call him Michael Jackson voice. And it was like, so like high pitched and feminine. And I was like, Oh my God. And he's like six, eight. Like it was just really, but that also wasn't the only thing he just, we could not, I didn't write him off. I was like, I'm here, you know, yeah. it's, I'm, I'm here. We're eating, we're on the street, you know, uh, we're out able to enjoy the fresh air during a pandemic while we can. And so I'm going to enjoy it and have a few drinks and, um, it just nothing. Yeah. It was just the conversation. Just, it was like pulling teeth and it just, mm. it was tough. And there got to a point. Well, first of all, there got to a point where I was, we started talking about candles. I was like, what's well, the low, this is an all time <laughs> low. What's your favorite candle. And then, but then I just was like, fuck it. And he had said something earlier in the night about like being kind of closed off. And I was like, so why do you think you have your walls up? Like I just went full therapist. <laughs> and Cause I, that's the shit I want to talk about. I'm not mm -hmm. going to date this guy. I don't give a fuck what he thinks about me at this point. So let's just get deep with it. And yeah. I kind of came away from it. You know, I got to get to know somebody on a deeper level and we never, uh, He's a nice guy, but we obviously never went out again. I think yeah. we both, we side hugged on the corner and went our separate ways, but, um, it was, it was that moment of just like, I, I hate this. You know, I just like, <laughs> there's no chemistry. I am like struggling to think of what to ask next, but mm -hmm. it happens to everybody. Yeah. yeah. Just ask I them think... about their childhood trauma, I guess is what <laughs> I'm saying. <laughs> I think those dates are particularly tough, especially after a breakup, when you get back out into the world and you're like, Oh my God, this it's is all out bad. there. Yeah. And you're so upset. And, you know, I, I do encourage people, you know, if you don't feel like dating, don't, it should feel fun. It should feel mm -hmm. exciting. It should be something that you enjoy. So if it's going to make you feel bad, don't do it. But I went on a date years ago with this guy. He made this, a lot of like really gross sexual comments towards mm. me. He told me he was sleeping with his neighbor. Mm. Um, he was tremendous. And then he like would switch into being really pretentious, which was very bizarre. And halfway through the date, I got up, I excused myself. I went to the restroom and I made notes of all the crazy things he said so that I wouldn't forget to tell my friends later. And it's become <laughs> this like funny story. And, you know, I left and I was like, oh man, like that sucked. But, you know, I have this funny story. Um, I think what Ashley's talking about where it's just like nothing happens. Yeah. Is 
was the toughest for me to get through. Cause I'm like, I, this is, I don't even care. Like, I like to hear crazy things you're going to say. If you're not even going to do that. Um, it's disappointing for sure. So I understand it's like tough to get through. Yeah. I think we all have those. I mean, we all have crazy dates, like all the uh, stuff we just talked about, but like the flat date, like is the, I also mm-hmm. find it really awkward and just like, Oh my God, I just want to get out of here, but I don't really know how to, um, kind yeah. Of situation. Yeah. And I love that you basically point blank asked, um, and you know, I'm sure you didn't do it in a, like a mean spirited way. Like it was just kind of like a funny, he, he mentioned that he's kind of like, like that. And so you kind of like grabbed on to just, you know, really on. Yeah. I was like, maybe, yeah. Is he going to tell me? I mean, he just, (laughs) and then it got kind of heavy. I was like, oh, okay. He was like bullied as a kid. I'm like, we're really Uh, went down a dark path, but I also think he felt like, a safe space. We've been yeah. nice to each other the entire yeah. evening. Um, yeah. and I met a girl in the bathroom who like is a fan of our podcast and we've like messaged a little bit and she was <laughs> on this date. And I, when my date went to the bathroom, I was like talking to her and her date. It was like a funny experience. Like we just, <laughs> I think Ran and I both, I mean, we, you know, we have a podcast to talk about these things, but even before that, I just always like to come away with a good story, whether you, you know, just share with your girlfriends at brunch or you tell your friends, like we all love a story, you yeah. know? Yeah. And you know, that's okay. You okay, got heavy, but it's, that's probably was better than talking about candles. Right. Yeah. And also <laughs> like, maybe he, maybe that was therapeutic for him. I did tell, yeah. I gave him some advice. Like I have this, like knowledge, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, the candles, that was a, that was a low. <laughs> Um, I want to say one more thing. Okay. Uh, don't be afraid to leave if you don't like it. You mm-hmm. know, um, I had this, I'm looking across the street. I had a terrible date across the street one night. I felt like physically uncomfortable. Mm. Um, I thought he was getting a little physically aggressive with me. Um, and I was just like, I, I used Ashley as an excuse, um, to leave. And I said that Ashley had deleted the podcast by accident and I had to go record with her. And I, because I was across the street from my apartment, I didn't want him to see me go into the building. Right, so I called right. a car, got yeah. in the car and had them circle. But but um, absolutely, if you don't feel like this is a place I want to be, then leave, mm-hmm. you know, and don't be afraid to, to tell somebody you can't be there anymore. Yeah. And especially, you know, in a situation like this, where you feel unsafe and, un- like, yeah. you know, um, that that's definitely a signal that you should follow immediately. And I didn't feel like physically unsafe. I was in a busy sports bar, but, um, especially if a man is making you feel, or or a woman, anybody, um, is making you feel sexually uncomfortable, physically uncomfortable, always excuse yourself. You don't have, you don't owe anybody your time if they're not being kind to you. So get, get the fuck out of there. (laughs) Great. Um, what if, what if you feel like you're the person who, um, (laughs) And then, then not the other way, but, but like, you're the person who like, every time you have a date, you, like the conversation seems flat. And so you're thinking of like, okay, how do I not, how do I, what can I do to not have a flat conversation? Because this seems to be like occurring a lot to me. You should take a look at your, I don't say that this is going to sound snarky, but it, I don't mean it this way, but you should take a look at your life. Is your life boring and flat? You know, do you just, you don't have anything to talk about because you don't have anything going on. Um, you know, not everybody has a big personality, but everybody is unique in some way. And so, uh, I think always think about those things, think about your interests, what you like to do. And if you're like, God, I really just, I don't want to have anything going on. Then we always say that like, you're going to attract somebody when you're really like living a great, like when you're living your best life, like a great life and you're really happy. So it may, maybe it's not the best time for you to be dating. If you feel like, God, I'm such a boring date. Maybe it's time to go out and do something that makes your life more exciting before you start, you know, going mm-hmm. out with other people. But yeah, I, I, I feel for like shyer women. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, I, I was going to mention, like, I think kind of like what you said, I think, you know, every single one of us brings something unique to the right. We're, we're like a unique individual. So I do think we all have interesting things to say and um, with with our dates, I think sometimes we just have a hard time pulling that out of us because we are shy or maybe because we're an introvert, especially in the very, very beginning. And so that's, um, I think a lot of our daters who are shy or an introvert have a a struggle with that. So, and I'll say one more thing and then kick it to Raina, but a couple of things that you can do is just make sure you're physically comfortable and the setup of the date is comfortable. So 
don't stuff yourself in an outfit that's physically uncomfortable. You know, I think you, if you could have a go-to summer outfit, go-to winter outfit, I've worn the same outfit on so many different dates. I feel sexy in it and I'm physically comfortable and then go on a side by side, like the experts, which I guess we are, but them too, <laughs> but like the, they call it like a side by side date where you're not just staring at each other across the table, mm. um, like taking a walk in the park or where you're not just having to stare at somebody and it feels like an interview. Um, I even think it can be a little bit better sitting at a bar uh, now that we can again, I think like, as opposed to sitting right across from somebody at a, on a two top on a, on a, in a restaurant. So like, but walks are great. Like, I just feel like there's no judgment. You know, if, if you suggest something to do and someone shames you for it, don't go out with that person. You should be able to say like, Hey, I'd love to meet up. I'm bringing my dog to the park. You want to grab a coffee or, you know, put some rosé in a solo cup or meet up or, you know, something that you feel comfortable you should always feel comfortable. And I think that just the state of the world, women should be able to make the, should be the one to kind of make the plans where they feel physically comfortable in a first date scenario with a stranger. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that I'm, I'm glad that you brought up people that are shy or perhaps insecure. So I think to soothe that off the bat, you know, just remind yourself that everybody is insecure. Everybody, the person you're going on a date with is also like, is this person going to like me? Are they going to find me attractive? Mm -hmm. You know, not everybody shows up to the, to a date. Like I'm the hottest shit on earth. I'm the <laughs> coolest. I'm the smartest. So just remind yourself the person that you're with is also feeling like that as well. And I loved Ashley's tip of just like prepping for it. So if you're like somebody that feels like everything falls flat, maybe have a couple just go to things that you like to ask people and talk about. Um, the tip I always give, there's a great New York times article. It's called 36 questions that lead to love. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's divided up into groups. Um, so they do get like progressively deeper throughout, but the first like nine, 10 questions are just like, if you could live anywhere else besides the city you live in, which one would you pick things like that? If you, if you had to live in three different places over the next five years, where would you go? Things like that. I mean, anything that anybody can respond to. And then yeah. You should be able to take that on a tangent and run with it. Uh, I mean, really just Google like first date questions and <laughs> go in with an arsenal of those things. And also say to yourself, like you were saying, everybody's like a unique, special individual. Ask yourself, what are those things about me? And mm -hmm. know those things and self-start those conversations. I always like to ask people and pepper them with questions because Ashley and I interview people for a living. It's probably my go-to to learn about other people because I know everything about me. Mm -hmm. um, but if somebody really isn't giving me anything, I will just start talking about my interests and hobbies. I don't give a shit. If you're not giving me anything, I'm going to talk about what I want to talk about. And hopefully you like some of those things and that sparks interest and joy in you. Mm -hmm. And if not, again, that's not your person. Right. That's mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Love that. And some of the things that you mentioned, you know, like the setting, um, I do think it's, it, it can help, um, you know, sitting like, you know, interview format versus like when you're actually casually walking, you're just more relaxed. Right. And mm -hmm. so, and then, and then you can kind of comment on things that um, if, yeah, if you're somebody, and, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like if you are like somebody like me, actually, who's like, oh my God, I can't stand this silent, like quietness. Like I need to say something. I mean, you can kind of like uh, talk about the things that you see. I also like that idea of bringing a dog because I think um, some of us have a hard time bringing up something like personal, like uh, mm -hmm. they, it, because it feels like a little bit, you know, I think in, in our head, we can debate, okay, am I going, is, it, is this too personal to share like on a first date? Maybe I shouldn't share, like, you know, kind of go back and forth and back and forth. But um, personal stories are what makes us interesting, right? If we're mm -hmm. just sticking to generic stuff, like it's going to be boring. And so if you bring a dog, that's like, that's something like you own person, like very personal to you. It, um, you know, I don't think the interesting thing has to be something like super crazy, like, oh, you know, I just came back from traveling around the world, like all a continent. And, you know, you know it doesn't have to be things like that. Um, as long as it's something personal, I think it can be interesting. So if you bring a dog, it kind of gives you an excuse to be able to talk about that. Mm -hmm. um, so I really like that idea also. Um, what a, let's talk about being funny. So what's interesting is, uh, and maybe actually it's, maybe it's obvious, but when we survey our daters, Hey, like, how do you, how do you tell, how can you tell if, um, how do you determine if a date went really well? And the number one answer that came back for both men and women was like, if we, it, like we let both laughed a lot. Um, and so, you know, 
that's something very important um and you know what people actually use to kind of gauge like oh this day really went well and I think some of us because of that fact like feel pressure to be funny um and maybe we don't feel like we are you know not all of us are comedians right and and being funny is not our like the biggest strength um any tips here for those of us who don't really feel like we're you know we're that funny not everybody wants to date a comedian, you know, I, I think <laughs> the trust us on that girl, <laughs> just trust. <laughs> yeah. No I'm one's funnier of- than me. No one wants to date me. Okay. <laughs> just let's be clear. Okay, some people want to date me. I just don't want to date them. <laughs> That's awesome. No one wants to fuck my no. sense of humor. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, not everybody wants, first of all, not everybody wants to date somebody that's funnier than them. Um, mm. and not everybody wants to date somebody that's hilariously funny. I think that funny is completely subjective. Oh I God, think that yeah. Ash, Ashley and I have very sarcastic, <laughs> fucked up senses of humor. Not that's not everybody's level. I mean, the stuff that I'm willing to say might scare other people. So I, listen, it's not that bad, but, uh, <laughs> I, I, you want to find somebody that has a comparable level of comedy to you. So not everybody wants a hilarious person. And I see couples that like laugh a lot. And I'm like, what do you guys talk about? I find neither <laughs> of you interesting, but <laughs> they find each other interesting mm-hmm. and fun and funny. Um, I like to, I mean, I, I like to date people in comedy cause they're funny. Not everybody wants that. Um, mm-hmm. so I wouldn't be worried at all about being hilarious on a date. The person that's like the right match for you will think that things that you think are funny. Yeah. Right. Like, geez, I'm trying to think of all the dates I've went on where the guy got to laugh a lot, but I sure wasn't laughing. No, just kidding. <laughs> oh, I'm kidding. Um, like, yeah, it's so comedy is so subjective. I mean, it's just like, if, but, uh, comedy can be like laughs and things that are funny can be so observational. So if you're like, I want to get some more like comedy and laughs in my life. So I have like Mike, I strengthen that muscle a little bit, like just watch comedy specials, go to comedy shows and uh, like, look at memes online. I probably reference a <laughs> meme in every date I've ever been on, like what, whatever. Cause it, that's, those are the things that make us laugh these days. Those are the jokes of our generation, you know? So I think I'm always referencing pop culture stuff. I, uh, I think you can always go on like Twitter before a date and like, see what's trending. You know, sometimes it's going to be pretty dark and dismal, but, uh, for, you know, every once in a while there'll be something kind of comedic in there, but a lot of it is just, I also, you know, we laughed so much is like one of those very like rom-com answers. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, did you, how much did you laugh? <laughs> you know, people like think they should say that. It's not that every great date they're like busting at the guts, you know, laughing to, at each other. So I think like, don't judge a date based on that too, especially a first date when you're really getting to know each other. But, uh, yeah, I think if you feel like you should kind of be injecting more comedy into your life, I think it's like really easy to do. And I think always, uh, just the observational stuff is the funniest stuff. I mean, I went on a date, we had an insane server and he sprayed me in the face with a bottle of rose water, I, 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 unconsensually just sprayed <laughs> me in the face. Like it was unreal. You know, like, I think that's kind of the beauty of dating in New York is like, just the shit that's happening all the time is like stuff to comment on, you know, like it kind of, the, the content is just always around us. So I think that, um, the funniest moments I've had on dates have not necessarily been like jokes that we're telling mm-hmm. each other. It's like the mm-hmm. shit that's happening yeah, in our surroundings in the yeah. atmosphere. Yeah. Absolutely. Also, I, I have been on plenty of dates with people that we laughed all the time and they turned out to be an asshole, a total sociopath. <laughs> yeah, go off you right know, now. That's, but, that's, that's, that's your, that's your type. <laughs> some of my, some of my favorite dates I've ever been on. have been like seven hours long. We went to five bars. It was the funniest night of my life. Fuck those guys. Okay. <laughs> Beware of those guys. I just, there's a hundred other things that are also important. I, I mean, if you ask me a list of like the five most important things to me, it is absolutely somebody that makes me laugh and actually too, like top, top, top. But in, in addition to that, you know, laughing at stuff is not going to going to make a relationship last. So, you know, are the, is this person smart? Do they feel like they'll be supportive? Do I enjoy being with them? Personally, I like somebody that likes to like explore the world around them and do a lot of activities. Do they do that stuff? Am I going to enjoy them while we do it together? Um, but I, you know, take the pressure off of trying to be like, so funny. It's, yeah. it's totally fine. And it's not the end all be all. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just some of these guys on these apps, 
it's like, tell me you're not funny without telling me you're not funny. It's them telling you that they're funny. Hope you can keep up with my sarcasm. Hope you like witty banter. You better be able to keep up. Chad, I can tell you are the most <laughs> unfunny person by you telling me how witty and sarcastic. My lang, my uh, what I my second language is sarcasm. I'm sure it's not. I'm sure I can out sarcasm you any day. Like I've been noticing this so much. Like I hate that. Like hope you can keep up. Like, come on. <laughs> I almost want to go out with those guys just for the challenge. It's like, if you have to tell people how witty and sarcastic you are, I'm going to guess that you are not. I mean, it's this, if you have to tell people how rich and successful you are, you're not. <laughs> oh, so yeah, think true. about it like that. Think about people that talk about their money all the time. They don't have that much money. So, <laughs> um, oh my God, this is funny. Um, <laughs> so, so yeah, but kind of bringing the point home. I do think, you know, just laughing doesn't have to be on like jokes after jokes. I think when we're having a good time, we tend to laugh a lot and um, it doesn't have to be coming from like comic mm -hmm. jokes. So I like um, right now what you said, which is like, you know, there is no need to put so much pressure on yourself to feel like you need to be funny um, because that's not, uh, yeah, that's not like everything about the date. And when you enjoy, I mean, you could be laughing because they, they, are, they look so endearing or for any other reasons, right? Um, for, uh, so I really like that. And there, it takes a while, it might take a while to yeah, come out, so you know, true. sometimes people just really, I've totally met people that maybe I didn't think they were quote unquote funny the yeah. first time we hung out, you know, dates, girlfriends, guy friends, and it just, they feel more comfortable and their, their sense of humor comes out. Like I just, Rain and I are really outgoing and we're really, you know, the opposite of shy. And we really show you our whole personality. The first time you meet us, as long as we're like in a good mood or whatever, but like, <laughs> it's, that's not everybody's personality type. So yeah. I think if I think having that similar sense of humor is important, you know, if some guy showed up and like all he did the whole date was like, quote, Austin powers or something, I'd be like, <laughs> I don't think this is going to be a match, but just give people another chance. If you like them enough, you know, yeah. like if you're like, I really want a funny guy, like maybe he is, you know, if you liked him, if you liked enjoying talking to him enough to want to see him again, like that could come out. Yeah. You know, it's like peeling away the layers of a person. Right. I really like that. Um, it takes time for us to get comfortable. So yeah. Are there any topics that you think are taboo uh, to bring up on first or like early dates? I mean, we always say read the room, you know, mm. like I, <laughs> I, I, there's some people I would never talk about relationships with or, or, you know, past relationships, sex, politics. Uh, I think that we, we live in a political world. It would be a little crazy for, you know, Donald Trump to not have come up in the last couple of years, um, or politics in general on a date, um, to pretend that this isn't happening and the things that have happened over the last couple of years didn't happen is crazy. Um, like I said, the last two serious relationships I was in, the current one I'm in. Um, I asked on the first date, if you want to have kids, I asked hours into the date. Uh, but I do sort of want to see like where somebody stands. Uh, there's certain, there's certain deal breakers for me. If somebody is super religious, um, I don't want to date them. They probably don't want to date me. Uh, if somebody does want to have kids, I'm certainly soon again, it's not going to be for me. So I think nothing is taboo as long as you like read the room. I don't ever want to feel like somebody is encroaching upon my, my like sense of safety. I mm. think that there's boundaries. I think that, you know, I wouldn't out of the gate be like, what do you like sexually? If we weren't <laughs> talking about it already. Uh, but I think that again, at least for me, somebody that, uh, I'm going to have feelings with for and, and have a connection with, will talk about some like crazier things sooner at yeah. least. Yeah. 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 I, I don't, I mean, you know, that's, I don't think there's any topic, you know, I'm mm -hmm. trying to, what are the topics people would say, you know, politics, sex, you know, whether you want children or what, whatever. I don't think anything that standard first date topics, like I, I think it's a personal thing. I think, mm -hmm. uh, there's some things I wouldn't share about myself, uh, on a first date, you know, mm -hmm. to someone that I don't really know yet. Um, and I think rain and I've had to not learn that the hard way, but just kind of learn that as we feel like we developed more of a 
you know, became more of personalities where we were like, we can't just be telling strangers, like all this stuff about ourselves, you know, <laughs> who knows? Like, so, and then the drinks are flowing and you want to open up to somebody. So I've had to kind of reel it in, in terms of like what I give somebody that I don't know that well, but that's mm-hmm. my own, those are my personal boundaries. I don't know a topic that's off limits because those touchy taboo topics are like the stuff I kind of want to know right out of the gate. Yeah. Um, um, and I, I have the same exact boundaries as Ashley. I'm very private about our business and our relationship. Um, I probably personally wouldn't talk about past relationships on a first mm-hmm. date. I just don't, I don't want to hear about somebody's <clears throat> past relationships. Um, if somebody says like, you know, I was married previously, fine. I don't want to hear about your divorce. Um, <laughs> I would just, I would stay away from a lot of negativity on a mm-hmm. first date or two. I, mm-hmm. I don't really want to lead with like this thing sucked. I didn't, you know, I, I just would sort of, uh, avoid really negative stuff where like you, you come off as a negative person, yeah. unless it's a little lighter and more surface and you're joking around about something right. like, Oh my God, when I watch people take selfies, it makes me cringe. Um, other than that, you know, I don't really shy away from anything. And I've also, in terms of boundaries, Ashley was saying, I've had to have little discussions with myself in the mirror where I'm like, stop sharing so much, mm-hmm. reel it in. Um, yeah. That's really interesting. Yeah. And well, some people just, I, I, I think they, we always say like, if you're really vibing with somebody, you can almost feel a false sense of closeness. And especially if you're drinking and I mean, we've all been there myself included. And so I think sometimes, you know, things (laughs) sometimes before, you know, you're like crying about something, you know, you're just like, (laughs) what happened here? So I always think like those it's, we all learn from it. Like, you're like, Oh my God, like, I can't believe it. But last night I had a full bottle of red wine and I cried to my first date about my dog who died. Like I'm not going there again. And then, you mm-hmm. know, for the next time, but I think brain is right. That lends it. That's like negative stuff, really heavy trauma. <laughs> Maybe that's the thing I would steer away from the, the full blown trauma and the tears. If anything, <laughs> things that are going to make you cry. Maybe keep those second date material. Yeah. And if you have veered into some weird area, that you don't want to be in change the subject. And I, I was sort of not the same scenario, but I was on a phone date with somebody and we were like 40 minutes in and I was like, I hate this. And I texted Ashley and I was like, we are talking about the dumbest shit. And Ashley was like, change the subject. And I was like, oh yeah, yeah I, I can change the subject. What did you do, Raina? Cause I don't even know. I mean, basically Raina was like, all we're talking about is work and like boring small talk. You know, not that, I mean, I could talk about work all day, but just like, it wasn't sexy at all. Like, what did you do? Did you have a, like, do you remember what you did? It was all work related. I don't remember actually. And I wish I could, cause it turned into a four hour phone call. Um, yeah. and I'm, da- I'm dating him now. So, um, oh, wow. That's that's <laughs> wow. What a turnaround. I, like I was like, Brandon, you're in charge here. You, or I mean, not in like a, I don't know. I'm just meant like you can control this n- energy of this phone call. Like why? I mean, he's probably sitting there thinking too, like, well, I don't, you know, I don't want to cross a boundary with her. I don't want to ask her what she's into sexually or whatever it was, but I think you did something that changed the course of the conversation, like for the better. And I just knew that you could. So I told you to do it. I must've made a joke that I was like opening up a bottle of wine or starting drinking or something. I don't know what I did. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, I'm pinching my nipples right now. What are you doing? Uh, (laughs) But I, you know, looking back, like Ashley said, like, he probably thinks that like, he doesn't want to cross a boundary. You know, I've joked mm-hmm. with him about this since and said, like, I texted Ashley in the beginning of this to be like, I hate this so much. All we're talking about is work. And he said, like, that's what it seemed like you wanted to talk about. So mm. I didn't want to like make you uncomfortable. So, right. you know, as a woman, if you're like, you know, maybe he doesn't want to cross a boundary with me, then just say to yourself, okay, I'll cross a boundary. I'll encroach upon their boundaries now. Um, <laughs> But, you know, it's up to you to say like, okay, I can change this a little bit. And I was glad she encouraged me to do that. And it was a better conversation after. Yeah. And, you know, I don't know if you, I mean, men or women, like we could, we could change subjects if we are actually not really into whatever we're being talked about. And um, I'm so bummed that you can't remember what you did because that, you know, from dumbest shit to like four hour conversation, that's a dramatic transformation. So I would love to know, but I, you know, I'm, I'm guessing it could be as simple as like, oh, can we change the subject now or whatever, right? Like, can we, maybe, maybe let's talk about something other than work. Like it could be just as simple as that. I would think, Mm -hmm. right. 
Yeah. No. And if you need to reset and you're in at a restaurant, just go to the bathroom and be like, go to the bathroom, take a deep oh, breath. And then that. when you come back, the tone has changed. That conversation is right. over. That yeah. stupid boring work conversation is done. You come up with a new thing, sit down and be like, oh, I meant to ask you yada, yada. You know what I mean? Like, I whatever. love that. Yeah. That's a great tip. Yeah, that's really great. And then you're like, going to the bathroom like five times a night and then you just come <laughs> back with like a new topic. They're like, what a weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god um yeah and then because some of the other things that you guys brought up um you ladies brought up the like you know it's personal so I like the point about negativity like you don't want to you don't want to sound like a Debbie Downer um mm -hmm. you know I think that just kind of going back to your original point earlier point about like when you're feeling in, when you're in that zone of like oh god I got I'm feeling negative like don't go on a date right because nobody wants to be uh, dating Debbie Downer um were you going to say something, Ashley? No, it's just there. Yeah, because I, I think what we, what the world that we live in and just kind of everything, politics, culture, like there's those days where you're just so angry. I, I right. haven't felt those days and those probably aren't the best days to go on a date and <laughs> not everybody might be feeling like, I just, I remember like there was a point I was talking to someone on a dating app during the, uh, during the pandemic and he it just got dark quick. You know mm. what I mean? And I could feel that he was angry about the same stuff I was, mm. but it just kind of, it was the actual Debbie Downer, like the SNL sketch of like, mm. you say something and then they're like, well, actually, and it's just like, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's true. And I care about it too, but like, can we keep it a little lighter on a, <laughs> on a first date that I, I will talk about that deep, dark, like maddening, depressing stuff all day with people I'm close to. But I think sometimes you're, you have so many thoughts going through your head. You're so angry about something. You're so passionate about something. And then you just like let loose on a stranger and they're like, well, okay, I, I'm, a, I'm a liberal too, but it's just like going so hard. Yeah. Um, I think also like even before the date on dating app profiles and Ashley and I've given this advice as well on our show, you know, think like, are my answers negative? And I, mm. I actually don't even like when somebody says like, you better be able to keep up with me. No, I'm never, like, never <laughs> X out immediately. No, never. I, I just, I, 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 if you, if you're not sure how this can be read, um, ask a friend to look at your dating app mm -hmm. responses, um, just the prompt responses, because maybe you think something sounds funny in your own head, but it's actually like really kind of nagging and mm -hmm. like just, just your answers to the prompts. And I think that people are less likely to swipe on somebody that's like, you better be able to handle this or like, you know, stuff like that. Um, or any of like, must be this, this, and this never, never. It's an automatic no all the time. I hate mm -hmm. that. I hate the tone of it. I hate the like, you better be this person or you better do this or you better right. do that. It's just I mean, it comes weird across, controlling. It, it, I don't like it. Yeah, exactly. And it, it, I mean, we all have deal breakers, so that's fine. But I think on the app, like when people are just kind of going through things um, and on a profile, you're not even like, you're not there to explain. You could come okay. across as somebody who's judgmental, right? So even right. same with women must be six, three, must be this and that. Absolutely. Don't go out with that girl. She <laughs> needs to listen to our podcast and work on herself and then she will be a better date for the world. But yeah. So I love that. That's like Raina, we've talked about this before. I can't think of an example off the top of my head, but how you can shift those something that's, uh, the way it's, the way it's written as negative into a positive, you can actually get the same point across in a mm. positive way, as opposed to a negative way, but yeah, have somebody look at it, same sex and opposite sex. Yeah, you know, absolutely. like if a guy friend showed me his profile, it could tell him immediately what's going to turn right most women off. You know, right, right, right. Great tip. Oh my god! So we are almost out of time. Um, and uh, wow, that by that went by really fast. Um, so there's a final question I ask every Save the Date guest: What is the best dating advice you've ever received? Damn it! Maybe right now you go mm. first. Oh, <laughs> yeah, Ray, go first. <laughs> oh God. No, I just, you know, I guess, I don't know the best, but I think just to like, don't take it all so seriously. Mm -hmm. This should be fun. You should enjoy it. I love Ashley's tip of like, wear something you feel sexy and go to a place that you enjoy. Just try to connect with a person. Don't take it so seriously. If it doesn't go well, that's fine too. People have shit going on. If someone doesn't respond, you want an app also fine. You're a stranger that lives in their phone. You don't know what anybody is going on in their life. And I just, you know, I, I think just walk into it, being yourself, be light. It should be fun. Don't take it so seriously. Um, mm is, is a good piece of advice. Yeah. Yeah. I really like that. Yeah. I, I don't know if this is 
advice someone gave me, or I figured out on my own, or I worked through it with friends, but just ultimately not taking things personally. When I moved here, I was on some of the apps and I just felt like a sense of rejection. Like I just felt Mm. like I was guys weren't, you know, and I would do I don't know if we can say their apps like Bumble. Like, I I don't like if I would, I'll just say if I were to message a guy first and he didn't respond and, or I'd be, they'd unmatch me. Like, why didn't you know, why'd you even like me in the first place? Like (laughs) I got really down on myself. Um, I considered the apps I was using and maybe some weren't, weren't the best for me because for Mm. for my own self-confidence, but so much of it, it was just like, it's not personal. These are, we always say, like Raina says, strangers who live in your phone. Like I do the same shit. You know, I think it's like that self-talk of like, there's really cute guys sitting in my queue, right? right now that are t- trying to talk to me and I don't care anymore. Like I, mm-hmm. I don't, I'm not interested in this moment. And I, you know, so I'm doing the same stuff that would, would you still low key hurt my feelings if it was done to me. So I think like not taking things personally. And then again, like Rob's are uh, my best guy friend, Rob's advice is like no bad dates. Like so that's kind of a life mantra of like always trying to find the silver lining or the positive out of a negative and just trying to take something out of every situation. Um, so you don't go home and you're like, I wasted an outfit or I wasted a, a contour, you know, like, I hate that feeling of like, I wasted my time. I wasted my blowout. So if you can kind of pick out something positive that came out of it, I just, I like the no bad dates mantra. Yeah. 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 And no dates mantra and, you know, not taking things personally or not taking things so seriously. Um, I think it's important, especially because, you know, I think it's easy to feel jaded in dating. And if you're not dating, I mean, of course we all been there and you know you take a break like uh, we talked about if you're in that place but if we're not like putting ourselves out there and we're not dating then we can't actually expect a relationship to just show up right so mm-hmm. i think it's so important to be able to like stay in the in the um in the game i guess is i, I hate to call it game but you know like just be in the dating scene cuz uh, you know if you're not then nothing's going to happen and um mm-hmm. in order for us to do that yeah, like not taking things personally and, you know, um, no, no bad date. I, I really like that. Um, so Raina and Ashley, if the audience wants to, um, if our daters want to, you know, stay connected with you and learn more about what you guys are doing, like how can they find um, out more about you two? Ashley takes us out on every episode. Oh, so I'm going to hype the website. Um, everything, like you can find everything Girls Gotta Eat on our website, girlsgottoeatpodcast.com. Even everything down to episodes. If you want to search by search terms, mm. uh, Raina's our website queen. So I'll give her props for managing the website, uh, our merch and our show dates. When those are happening, you can find that all there. And then we are Girls Gotta Eat Podcast on Instagram. So girlsgottoeatpodcast.com, girlsgottoeatpodcast on Instagram. I am Ash Hess on Instagram. And Raina is Raina.greenberg and we're girls underscore got eat on Twitter and youtube.com slash girls got to eat. Awesome. Basically everywhere. <laughs> and of course, like listen to the podcast where, uh, wherever you listen to podcasts, we, um, obviously are on Apple and then Spotify and we've been doing some fun playlists on Spotify. So we're basically mm. putting like their themed playlists. So, you know, um, you know, a sex theme or a breakup theme, it'll be the episodes that touched on that topic, or we spoke about that topic mixed in with songs that go with it. So we did one like to hype you up to get, to get out there and date, which would be perfect. Like we really put all our episodes of kind of like how to date app stuff all in one. And then like a really like hype you up to get out there and mm. have a, a shock girl summer, we call it. Uh, so that's in there in our Spotify playlist. Oh my God. I'm, that sounds so cool. I'm going to check it out immediately. Um, and of mm-hmm. course I've listened to your podcast and it's super fun. Everyone like, and, and informative. So please go and listen to um, Girls Gotta Eat. Thank you so much for joining us, um, Ashley and Reina, and um, all of you out there, we'll see you soon. Uh, as a reminder for our audience, all these show notes will be on our blog, coffeemeetsville.com slash blog. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you.